More now on the news that the UK has objected to Gibraltar being described as a colony and its status as controversial in EU documents. The phrases appeared in new European legislation that would allow British citizens to travel to the EU without a visa after Brexit. Well, we can speak now to Gibraltar's Chief Minister, Fabian Picardo. Thank you so much for joining us here on BBC News. Um, I assume you share Downing Street's annoyance at this vocabulary. Of course, and I'm very pleased, in fact, that the Prime Minister has immediately made known the views of the United Kingdom and Gibraltar. We consider this language to be unnecessarily provocative. I don't know what Spain is playing at, how they think that this enables us to build a strong relationship going forward. The Spanish repeatedly say that they want Gibraltar to become Spanish. Well, here is good evidence of why the Gibraltarians just don't even want to countenance that possibility. At every opportunity, our giant neighbour takes whatever opportunity it might to stick its finger in our eye. I mean, I suppose one might say that this is just a use of language rather than anything else. It's, uh, it's, it's point scoring, maybe, and maybe that's annoying, but it doesn't amount to anything. Well, it's pejorative and provocative language. And, you know, we go out of our way to avoid using pejorative or provocative language unless we're having to defend ourselves. And I think as we look to build a future outside of the European Union and we're going to have a relationship with third countries and with the European Union, diplomacy will be important. And part of diplomacy is to avoid being unnecessarily provocative. It seems to me as if those who represent Spain in Brussels are trying to be as provocative as possible in order to try and score points for themselves in the context of Gibraltar and the United Kingdom's exit from the European Union unhelpful, it's unedifying, and it's not going to change the reality on the ground, which is that Gibraltar will not countenance becoming Spanish, whatever language they might want to use or persuade the remaining other 26 member states to use with them. Uh, and, and do you fear then that after Brexit, Spain in a sense will have carte blanche to use this sort of language and the UK won't be able to have any influence because the UK will be outside the EU and Spain will be in it? Well, the people of Gibraltar don't pay me to fear. They pay me to act and to ensure that Gibraltar counters any of this nonsense wherever it might emerge, whether it's in the context of the 26 plus Spain or more widely at the United Nations. I appear every year before the Committee of 24 of the United Nations that maintains the list of non-self-governing territories. We must understand one thing, though, that is important beyond uh, even today. And that is whatever Spain does in the ambit of the EU, in that club of which she will stay a member with the other 26, will not affect the reality on the ground. Gibraltar will not change its sovereignty and we will not allow one grain of sand of Gibraltar's territory or one drop of our water to be taken by Spain. And are we absolutely clear that it was the Spanish government that uh, had this language inserted in these documents? Well, it would appear that as a result of language which uh, they wanted to insert earlier, which was even more pejorative, uh, the French have objected to what it was that the Spanish wanted to say, and the Spanish seem to have settled on this language instead. Um, and it's the language that they appear to now want to push forward um, in future European documentation, which will change absolutely nothing. But it demonstrates to the whole United Kingdom that this is what Brexit will mean, whether in relation to Gibraltar and in respect of this clause or in respect of other matters, we will not be at the top European negotiating table. But on the issue of Gibraltar, there will be no change on the ground and Spain had better wake up to that. She may be able to exploit her position as the remaining member state in the European Union to play all sorts of merry games at the European top table of negotiation. But that will not change things on the ground one iota. Can I ask you another question? There's been a huge focus, of course, on the border on the island of Ireland uh, between Northern Ireland and the Republic after Brexit. But Gibraltar, of course, will have the other border uh, between the UK, UK territory and the European Union. How do you see that in the future? Does, are there going to be problems? Are there issues that that raises? And of course, there will be a third border between the sovereign based areas of Cyprus and the Republic of Cyprus. There isn't just the border um, at Northern Ireland, although that is the biggest and it is the one with the United Kingdom proper. And here on Gibraltar, we will have the only border with Schengen because you know, Spain is part of Schengen, whilst the Republic of Ireland is not. So we expect there will be no changes. There will be 
continued fluidity in terms of people and goods. That's what the Spanish government have repeatedly said and what we want to achieve. So I sincerely hope that on the 30th of March, we'll find no difference to what the experiences on the 28th and 29th of March this year uh, have been. But it will take goodwill and it will take effort. And steps like this from Spanish diplomacy do nothing to inject this process with goodwill. And Schengen, I should just point out for viewers, allows for uh, people to cross borders uh, without documentation. We're going to have to leave it there. Um, Fabian Picardo, many thanks to you. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you so much.